I'm searching for a road that shouldn't exist. I'm looking for a path that is unknown to others. I'm looking for a cemetery that might be an illusion of what it truly is. I'm searching for a man that is more than he appears. I am looking for an underground railroad cemetery in Indiana. Since I was a kid, I've grown up heard stories about an old cemetery that was full of runaway slaves. It's just located a couple miles north of Lexington, Indiana. Dr. Hutchings used to take care of the sick for the runaway slaves on the railroad. And the ones that would die, he would bury them right in his backyard off of his farm. We're here today search in search of that cemetery and the old location of the old farmhouse. The only problem is, how do you find something that shouldn't be there? Where do you begin? What do you look for? Hello, Pam. Travis. Yeah, hi, Travis. Happy to meet you. I'm Pam Peters. An historian who has devoted her life seeking the truth of the Underground Railroad might be able to help me with my own discovery. The Underground Railroad wasn't really it was a movement. It wasn't an organized system where there were free houses all along the way. I mean, sometimes maybe that happened as you got further north. But down here, you can't say there really, there was a system of safe houses because they had to get out of this area. Even though Indiana was a free state, bounty hunters made it difficult for African Americans to use anything other than the Underground Railroad. The one that went up through Watson and Charlestown um, headed a little bit further uh, northeast up to Otisco and uh, headed toward through Lexington. That was the, called the Louisville Branch. But um, at the time of the Civil War then, um, they had to stop building because they needed um, uh, the men for uh, the, the war. So an entire unfinished, unused train track ran from Kentucky through Indianapolis and up to Michigan. I'm here in Lexington, Indiana, talking to local historian Joe Gibson about this find. Could this be the path that led many to freedom? Hey Joe, what we got back here? So this is one of the stone arches built by the Irish, starting in the 1850s when they was building the railroad track through Lexington. And it, it started in Jeffersonville and passed all the way through Scott County, the eastern part of it all the way up to, uh, to Vernon, Indiana. And what year it started, 1850s? They started in the early 1850s, and uh, they started and had some financial problems and stopped it for a while, and then they picked it back up and were again going, and the Civil War intervened, or intervened with them. Mm -hmm. And uh, after the Civil War, they started back up and finished the track. So the uh, railroad was, I mean, it ceased uh, production during the Civil War time. Yeah, it was just an open bed just sitting here now, where they've been working. Now, Joe, is it possible during this time of the Civil War that, um, I mean, you got a you got a line running from Jeffersonville, which was basically just uh, Kentucky, all the way up here. Is it possible, it's a straight shot, that uh, you had runaway slaves coming up this I would way? say they probably did use that. It yeah. was an open, open road and... Uh, at that time, no tracks on it, no trains, and it'd be an ideal situation for them to use. Right. And this same uh, railroad system goes up straight north up to uh, close by to Dr. Hutchins' yes, house, Yes, it's, it? it's right along the edge of Dr. Dr. Hutchins' place. So if I want to find his place, I'm going to need to get on this and I'm heading north. Then, That's right? right. That's right. Okay. All right. You had a clear shot from Jeff Jeffersonville, which is close to Louisville, Kentucky, straight due north. All they had to do is walk. And this railroad supposedly goes right towards Dr. Hutchings' house. Dr. William Hutchings moved to Madison, Indiana after the Civil War to raise a family. Not much is known about his life in Lexington and his involvement in the Underground Railroad, which is still theoretical. The problem is we really don't know where the cemetery is. It's somewhere north, about a mile or two miles north of Lexington. All we have to go on is that there's a supposedly a double culvert bridge that there's a, a creek that runs east straight to the, the old doctor's farmhouse. So we're here trying to find that bridge right now. We got some great evidence of a creek nearby and that might possibly mean a bridge as well. Right over here across the field, we have sycamores that are lining the edge of the field. Sycamores always grow close to water. They take a lot of water to grow. And as you can see, they're lining that field, possibly mean there's a creek right there. And when there's a creek, we're walking on the railroad. To get across the creek, someone has to build a bridge. So let's see if there is a bridge 
that we can find. Could this culprit bridge really be evidence that this story is true? It is almost exactly one mile north of Lexington, right where it should be according to the record. Did this bridge signify shelter and protection to those who sought their freedom? How can I truly walk in the footsteps of legends? Will I find what I'm looking for? The problem with these local stories are, are the directions are really vague. We've been walking for a good 15 minutes up, got to be a mile within upstream and still no sign of any cemetery or foundation of a house. Um, just going to have to keep on looking, see if we can find it. As I press on, the fading of the day creates despair. Am I chasing a rainbow? Is there truly an end to my search? Only, I am left in the presence of nature and its inhabitants. But yet, I find hope. The great thing about March is in southern Indiana, Easter lilies come out early. The thing of, uh, interesting about Easter lilies are they're not wild. These things have been planted. But say they planted them a hundred something years ago, even if uh, a location is gone, these things will still spread out in the area. That means that there was a house or of some sort around in this location. So let's follow the Easter lilies and we can see if we can find where they lead to. I believe, this is theory of mine, I believe this is an old road. These things probably, just like an old uh, horse, and, horse and wagon trail, probably led right up to his house and he had Easter lilies planted on both sides of the roads. So as you can tell, we're going up some sort of flat area. It's kind of overgrown now, but these Easter lilies are still here. Oh, wow. Look at this. We got an entire bed of Easter, Easter lilies. That is amazing. Out in the middle of nowhere. Let's see where this goes to. That could be the front yard. We got, we got foundation. We got a big... We got a big hill of rubble right in front of us. Let's check that out. If I can recall right, his house was a brick house and that would explain why there's so much brick around in this area. We got a tin roof here. This is tin. They had tin roofs back then. What happened was this house probably fell down and someone came in here, a bulldozer, just kind of pushed it all together. But I believe this is it. Now, if we can find the old, if we can find the old cemetery, then we'll be right on the mark. All right, we got the old rubble of the house up on that hill. We got a little clearer field. This is probably his farmland, because he did own a farm as well as being a doctor. Still searching for the cemetery. Is a pile of bricks and tin enough proof that Dr. Hutchings lived there? The evidence is building, but I still need to find the cemetery to make my theory a fact. Will I find it in the twilight of the evening? What do those look like to you? Those look like those look like tombstones. Those do. I think we I think we found this thing. Row after row of bedrock commands an isolated hill in an empty forest. You can almost feel the historical presence. Why so many unmarked graves? Why here? I heard there was around 20 unmarked graves up here. We've already un uncovered over 40, and that's the ones we just invisibly see on the surface. No telling how many more are underneath all the rubble. But what are they doing here? It's like why in the middle of the woods you have over 40 some unmarked graves? The sad truth is that these are the ones that didn't make it north. This is their final resting place. This is their story. Well, we found the old Dr. Hutchings farm. We found the cemetery. This is an historic day in Indiana. Thanks for joining us with the Indiana Outdoors. I'm Travis James. Man, look at that view.